I'm, what I'm doing, people ask me, why do you drive tandem? You know, why do you drive them steady now? Steady, that'll do. That'll do, just walk. So, why do I drive tandem? Well, in this particular case, what I'm concerned about is two or three things. One is the fitness of these horses. Any carriage I put them in to cover any distance, I mean, obviously, I've got to cover the distance to teach them, yeah? So that's the reason, in this particular instance, why I'm doing tandem. Because they can share the workload between them, yeah? Also, I've got a very nervous pony on the offside, the done. So because of where we are, because we've got two poles on, he's held out more to the, the centre of the road. So that when vehicles come past, that suits him. And the other little fella here in the middle, right, is getting used, he's, in, he's going into single next. Yeah, you see there with that one, there he's pulling over. So he's going into single next, yeah. So because he's between two shelves, that sort of introduced him, because between two poles, it will help him with the shelves. The reason for, for tandem driving is the fact that if you don't want to have a unicorn, i.e. a pair with one out the front, because of manoeuvrability. This is borne out by, in France, omnibuses. So the buses that we all see on old postcards that run around London, you know, with a staircase up the back. In France, they used, uh, you know, three abreast. We did in this country in some places. But for that particular vehicle, two horses weren't quite enough. All depends on your district. If you was in a you know flat country, Lincolnshire, the Fens, anywhere around there, it wouldn't be needed so much. But if you was in a hilly part of the country, obviously, then you need perhaps just that other horse. And the trouble is, if you had a unicorn, you haven't got the manoeuvrability, you know, in a tight space of turning them around. So. So they're going lovely now. Now the other thing is, when you do a, a tandem like this, you have to be careful because if you look at me poles, I've got me poles in two different heights. The horses, the ponies here I should say, are interfering with the pole because the bay horse is sitting under the pole and lifting it slightly. That'll alter as we go along, I'm not too concerned about that at all, and the other little fella's much lower. So you've got to share the height for the poles. Um, so the one pole's lower to suit the little dumb pony, but not to interfere too much with the, the coloured pony. So that's the reason we've got this set up. You have to understand, while I'm talking to you here, I'm still doing my job. Um, and trying to explain at the same time, put a couple of GoPros on, one on my chest here and one coming back looking at me so you can see my hands and what I'm doing, yeah? So they're going along quite happy, I'm, I'm pleased with them, they're doing well, they're settling down, the little dumb pony's getting a lot better with cars coming past him. Um, and I can come right over, you know, I mean, I can come over, come over boys, come over. I can come right away for the white line from him to, to help him, you know? But the only way he's going to learn is to be out there and realise that he's safe, you know. So they're all in rubber bits, they're all going lovely. One, you'd look at the bales, so and now I've adjusted the reins for him, I've just turned his head out a little bit, yeah. So on my reins, these tandem reins, on the billets, i.e. The, the bit that fits around the bit, yeah, the billet, I have lots of different holes in and I have a long, you know, tongue on there as well. So I can adjust just that horse and that side of his mouth. Obviously I've got my coupling reins that I can adjust, but just for that particular pony, I just want to keep his head over there. If I have it any other way for the moment, once he settles down, you'll find that when he walks, and that in a minute as we get on with the job, He'll come away from the pole and he'll come 
you know, straighter, much straighter. He'll walk straight with his head straight. You can see there, even there, he's started to come, yeah? But I'll just add that, take that couple of holes up. I find that, for me, um, a great benefit is to have, as I say, more holes punched in the billet. I can adjust them up. It works, you know, you can use the same thing on a pair, on a team or whatever. Because, you know, when you've got a coupling rein, if you adjust the coupling rein back or forward, obviously you're adjusting the other rein as well. So if you bring your coupling rein back, you're also giving with the other horse's rein, you know. So you've got to be a little bit, you know, and it gives me more scope to do different things. So these are going along now. I'm very happy with these. This is set up. This is a bigger vehicle. Um, not much in weight difference to the smaller one we've got of the same, you know, the same vehicle, the smaller one we've got. Um, not much difference in weight, so I think it's like 60 kilo. Nothing really to be concerned about. But these are going along now, just absolutely lovely. The other thing I want to say to you is, when you're doing, you know, if anyone wants to put them in tandem, is to get your reins, the right reins. Now, I've just had some needed repair and they've gone away, and these are for full-size horses. Well, obviously, you can see here, they're, they're my buckles are right on the on my top rail, yeah? Which is not good, yeah? And we use we use a different, so, so we have our reins set up, so the tandem reins itself finish just past the last coupling rein. So if you look at them there, they finish just before, and then there's a ring fixed. I mean, the ring's actually sewn on and is, you know, perfectly safe. I've just put some tape over there because, again, when it's running over the rail wheel, you can pull your stitching, so I've just put some tape just to help it slide over. The reason we do that um, is because if I wanted to put these... Come up, baby. So I'm going to come out now. Walk on, darling. Walk on, my baby. Walk on. Come on, baby. Let me go. Go on. Go on, babies, up you go, that's it. So like that, nice and happy. Cheers, mate, God bless. That's it, all right, my darlings. That's all right, my babies, don't you worry about that. So that's a typical thing that happens, Great Big Lorry, Country Road, coming round. They're upset, but see, I didn't raise my voice, I didn't shout at them. I haven't slapped them with the reins or hit them with a whip or done anything like that. I've just sat here quietly and asked them to come round. Obviously, my little fella's not happy, you know, but he's not upset now, is he? He's still walking, you know, along and settled. Now, if we'd have tried that two days ago, he'd have been upset for a longer period after the vehicle had gone past, yeah? So he's coming to it and like that. And the more things we see like that, the more he'll accept now, if I found that he was really finding it hard to accept, yeah, what I would do then is I'd pop him in the middle, you know, so he's got all between him. You know, he's got all between him um, and the traffic. But he's coming all right. Just had a van pull up beside of us here, there. Um, doing part of deliveries, I suppose. Oh, my darling. Steady, my baby. Just walk. You see me bay pony coming straighter with his head now. Um, the pole's a little high, but it wouldn't be high if he'd come off of it. But he's sitting on it and holding it up a bit. That I'm not concerned about. People say, well, what if he bumps his head? Well, I'm making sure he doesn't. But I will bring his head round when the time's right and let his cheek, the side of his face, obviously his eyes protected by the blinker, I'll let that come round and just let him touch it, you know, like like that, let him just feel it, let him know it's there, that's good. But he, you know, all going pretty well. I'm sorry about this camera facing back at me because I've got to move my reins around to suit the job I'm doing. So yeah, going back over that, what I'm saying is the tandem, the reason being is maneuverability. That's why tandems were done in France, um, Paris particularly, or any large, you know, French city town that had omnibuses, they would be free abreast. Also, they're, um, 
coaches, their first road coaches, would have three of best postillion riding. You know, one of the uh, the, the near side horse behind in a pair, and then three out the front. They've always done, seem to do more than we do anyway, about, I suppose, maybe influenced by the French Alps. I don't know, very steep roads, airpin bends, etc. as well. I wouldn't argue that um, fact, because I, I don't know that. But actually, if you look back in, and, and read history, you can see the Trandum being used in France. It was used over here, but not so much on the public highway. More, obviously, in agriculture, it was used quite a bit, but... Um, steady my babies. So I'm happy with me the little ponies, I really am, and these have all got history. This one on the offside here has um, been frightened, quite badly frightened by some um, bikes, you know, these, when they're going for a, a, a race, and I don't know, the lady said several, come part, you know, in the, I don't know, hundreds, uh, over 100 bikes come past and frightened him you know he was a little bit upset by it and he, he lost the plot a bit so very fortunately this road we're on now on a weekend has a lot of um, you know cycle come over darling there's good baby yeah it's all right my sugar plum that's yeah, all right my darling just seen them green bags been put out for the collection he just had a look at my little bay pony so I'll just come over, my darling. I never want to force me horses into doing anything, but horses are an herd animal, after all, and going along like this, three of them together, they're you know, often more happy than they're going on their own or just two of them. So this little fella in the middle, he's eight year old, and as far as we can ascertain, has never done anything at all. But the people rescued him, um, and he was, quite handful when he'd come. He'd learnt all the tricks. He, he would use his head to bulge out of the way. So come on, my darling, that's it. So they're all going up here. I'm perfectly happy with them going along. And, uh, you know, obviously you can't put horses in danger. Um, so you've got to be confident in what you're doing. I suppose that's a very big thing, really, is the confidence of the driver. And also, I've been doing it a long while. And over that period of time, you do tend to get... Hello, how are you? <laughs> That's a little children playing in the thing there. Hello, they call me Bowie. <laughs> Hello, Bowie. Well, that's lovely. So we're going up here now. I'm just going to ask them to trot now, because they've walked. Trot, boys. That's it, steady now, just steady. So you can see the rain's bouncing about. I'm not hanging on their mouths. They've all only got a piece of rubber in, which is, um, you know, exactly what we want. My little fella's still laying on the pole on the inside. I'm not concerned about that for now. Really doesn't matter at all. What I shall do is put a retainer on the pole. And can you see him laying heavy on it now, yeah? That's all right. I can, I can, I could stop him doing that quite easily by letting the, his coupling rain out. Um, stand still, my darling. That's it, my baby. On you go then, walk on. Come round, just walk. That's it. So we've got a massive tractor coming past now, which is lovely. And I've just told the fella, come on. You know, and this will be another lovely little thing for me little baby here to cope with. So here it comes. And see, when you do things like that, you know, from when he was frightened, because when he got frightened by the old... Um, Bikes going past. He was then frightened about everything, really. But that makes it just sweet, you know, nice. I mean, you can see he's gaining confidence and believing in me, which is what all driving's about, is the fact that they believe in, in um, the person behind them. And if they do that, they do anything for you. And what also, what I like about this, this um, Trandom is we've got all these little ponies with different lengths of leg, yeah? I mean, obviously, you can tell by their ox, even putting even the two smaller ones, there's quite a bit of difference in the height for their ox and knees off the ground. So, they're all walking together. They're all keeping time. I am not holding on to them 
yeah? I'm not driving them up, yeah? Just talking to them and letting them enjoy it. Also, if you look, all their ears are pricked forward, you know, they, um, and they're happy, and that's what I want them to be. I want them to be, you know, happy in what they do. They're entitled to be happy. They don't want to be miserable doing something, do they? Oh, my darlings, just walk now, babies, just walk. The other thing I'll find with Shetlands, just getting off the subject to train them for a minute, the, um, is they get hot, you know, where they've got this woolly mane, you know, very, very dense woolly mane. So we cut a nice bridle path and give it a good trim round so the air can get round. At least that makes them a little bit more comfortable. I think all Shetlands are like that. You know, you've got that woolly coat. That's it, my darlings. There you go. So we're not going to go, you know, tremendous distance today. We're probably going to do five mile. And in that time, they're, they're you know, all of them settled, walking along, doing it. When I answer, when I pull me rein here, for instance, right, they're all answering all their mouths together, all want to come round, yeah? I'm letting them fill that pole there. Now you say, well, why do that? Well, because if they're ever in a pair, and you bounce, you know, down a pothole in the road's the worst thing, I find. That pole will, even with a retainer on it, can come up, you know, between your horses, yeah? Well, you don't want that starting them, so if they feel it there, they know that there's a pole there, they learn that. What I'll do, when I put the bay horse in with the little dells as a pair, um, and I'll get the other horse, you know, the one in the, in the, the pony in the centre going single, I'll probably put him out the front in a unicorn, maybe, and uh, build his confidence up so he'll still have his mates around him. He'll still know they're there, he'll still hear them, and that will let him get on and, and do his job out the front. Which will, which will be a... That's it, my darlings. When I'm making these films, you have to forgive me because my first priority, obviously, is to these ponies and make sure they're happy and they're going along sweet. So... I'm concentrating as much as I can to tell you what I'm doing, but at the same time, I've got to keep an eye on, uh, yeah, everything's going lovely there. Steady, my baby, just walk now, darlings. That's it. Just walk. Yes, you are, you good babies. Yeah, the, oh, these, I believe, um, there's certainly the two on the near side, of, you know, the coloured one in the bay, or rescue ponies, um, which is lovely that people do that. And, you know, they want them to do something, which is lovely as well, you know. And we've got a nice thing here now. We've got a dog come pounding up from across over there. You can see him just there. There he is. You know, come over to bark at him. That's lovely. Steady. I know you say to me, well, that's not lovely for the horses, but it's lovely because... My job is to get them safe under any circumstances, you know? Steady, baby. Steady, my darling. So, to be safe, confident and happy on the public highway or anywhere else you want to drive them. And, you know, therefore they need to meet things, don't they? And as I say, the trandom helps out there because they're in a little herd going along. They're not on their own. They're not facing the world completely on their own there. Steady, my baby. We'll talk about this little, so we've got the bay pony laying on the pole there, and we've got the other one laying his shoulder on the pole here. So all he's saying is to the to the, the pony in the middle, the coloured pony, don't leave me, will you? Don't leave me out here on my own. So, you know, because they're herd animal, they're going, that's lovely, we go along here, all three of us. You know, stay with me, won't you, and everything will be all right. So me, me rains, as I say, is all the, you know, as a summary, the, the rains, I have all the billets and made much longer. And I have a series of holes in them so I can do the side of, you know, any side, near side, off side of horse's mouth, and I can do it. Just take them up an inch at a time, two inches, three inches just to get them where I want them to be. 
I'm very pleased with this pony in the centre because he's using the pole as we're going along to scratch himself. Now I know you say to me we well, don't want us to do that, but I don't want it to be frightened of the pole either. So in, in that respect, I'm quite happy. He's just rubbing his old nose and his lips on it, and that's that's pleasing. Oh my darlings. I wave these vehicles on, turning off. That's it. Lovely. Steady. I'll just tell them, and that's what I want to do. That one there was beautiful. I don't know if you noticed, I hardly touch the reins, said to them steady, and they've all come back. Yeah which is another advantage of driving in a tandem, because if you've got one horse that's listening to you, they all come at different times, obviously. That's why you, you can't produce them on a conveyor belt. They all come at different times. So the ones that already, you know, you get one in the tandem that uh, is listening to you, and they'll slow up when I say to them steady, yeah? And in turn, the others will slow up. They're conscious of the fact that one of them slowed up. Steady, baby. Steady, my darlings. Uh, if we have a little trot now. Okay, boys, trot. 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 So my little centre horse here, he's laying back a bit off the collar here. Yeah? So I want to give him a slack rein to let him go up. He's gone back up now, that's lovely. Perfect. And I'm not putting any pressure on these horses' mouth, you see? So I've got to steer them to a certain extent, obviously. But we're not putting a great deal of pressure on them. We're only now, when we go up to this bend here where you can see them chevrons, Oh, mate. God bless you. Thank you. The man just stopped there, wound down his window and asked if it was all right to come by, which was very nice. Lovely. Um, Betty, my baby. That's it, my little darling. I'm not concerned about the pony, the bay pony laying on the pole to any extent. You say to me, well, would it make him sore? No, the, pole, the pole's wrapped with sponge. You know, steady my boat, so we can talk about that. The pole's wrapped with sponge. So it's not gonna make, and if you look at the pad, he's that's taking the brunt of him laying on there, yeah? But he'll come out as we go around and he'll be happy. And that's what it's all about. Just happy to go along together. Steady my boys. So they're working off the voice now, can you see? I'm just telling them to go steady. Both reins are very slack. They're going steady. Don't do that now. Start arguing, the two of you. Steady. That's my babies. The other thing is, when you get road markings, when you've got a train, it's very good. Because you, you know, if you've got one that's a little bit more advanced than the other one, you could put him, just let him come out, give him four holes on his traces, yeah, adjust your coupling reins accordingly, and when you get marks on the road, he'll step over and the others will follow quite happily. Um, you can see him there rubbing his old head and playing with that thing. And the other thing you'll see him do sometimes when you're doing this, is they'll actually pick up, when they're very, very settled and very content, they'll pick up the pole chains, hold them in their mouths, you know. We cover them with, you know, soft, flat hose pipe is what we use, flat plastic hose pipe we put over them. But they'll pick them up, you know, and play with them. And I love to see that, because that tells me they, they couldn't be any happier. They're, you know, they're very laid back with what they're doing. So that's lovely there. Steady. Steady, my sweetheart. That's it, lovely. 
lovely sunny day today. Don't want to get them too warm, you know. You don't want to come back and they're, you know, sweaty. I just want them just like this, lovely. And you can only go as, when it comes to, you know, working them, you can only do what the least fit one can manage, obviously. You can't want to be dragging him along or anything like that, that's no good. They want to enjoy it, and they want to think that was nice. I went up the road, I went a walk, that was lovely. And you get pretty like people in some ways, ponies like that. They're in the stable and they think, what do I want to come out of here for? It's fine, I've got me water, I've got me, you know, a nice bit of alage, nice smell to the alage and everything. Oh, I'm happy sitting here doing that, I don't want to go out. And then when you get them out, they say, come on, kid them and conjole them, you know, come out and talk to them and it, bring them out, put them to, and they get up the road and after, you know, no time, hundred yards at all, their ears are pricked forward and they're looking about and they're enjoying, you know, being out. And it's lovely. And I would sooner walk this, you know, four and a half mile we're going to do, I'd sooner walk it than I would trot it. I can fly around here if I wanted to and they would definitely go, believe me, they, they'd, you know, like to get on with it. But while we're doing this, that means the longer time we are on the road, the more they see on the road, the more they can take in markings, these shadows across the road, yeah? All are something they've got to get confidence in, you know, overcoming. You know, look, obviously the markings, like up here, for instance, we've got a thing on the opposite side of the road where this red car's coming to, where they're going to repair it, and they've sprayed some white lines round, you know, steady, baby, steady, my darling, saying where to repair it. So, you know, the um, those markings wouldn't have been there. Well, if you're trotting all the time, they're on it before they know. What I want is to let them see it, any little problems, you know, any little, you know, shadows across the road, writing on the road. I mean, I don't know, some, you know, obviously pheasants and that get knocked over, rabbits. All that type of thing are things that might... Oh, what's that, you know? But at the walk, if they'll walk over there for me and keep going just when I ask them to, then that's lovely. We're making progress. Come over, my darling, that's it. On, we were having a, another new carriage built, and on that one, the retainer on the pole, we're trying to get one that will, you'll be able to wind it with your hand around, so it takes it up and down, but still keeps the flexibility. That's the most important thing in the pole, is you want that flexibility, whether it's on shock absorbers, or whatever way on a spring of some sort. Really. What we want to do is to keep that flexibility there. So that was a nice rattly trailer delivering alage or hay there, I think. Um, they deliver all sorts of them leads. Come over, my darlings. Come over, my babies. That's right. That's it. You come over there. That's good. But no one is really, you know, uptight. You know, they're, they're pretty laid back, they're having a look round. My little bail, she wants to lay on the pole, that's his bit of comfort for now. He'll lay on that, because um, he thinks that's all right, I've got that, I've filled that one there, that's good. And I'm not that bothered, as I say, I could alter it in two seconds, but that's not where we're steady, my baby. That's not where we want to be. All right, my darling. Don't you worry, baby. Keep walking. That's it. Nice thing about ponies being in a, a tandem, they're not too wide. If you get three horses, you know, biggish horses, they can take up more than half, you know, more than our half of the road they can take up. But these fit in nice. If I bring them over, it's steady, bud. Come over. That's all right. That's it. If I bring them over there, come over. That's it, good. 
You can see there. Come over, darling. Come over. Come over. You can see we can get about, I don't know, four foot away from the, you know, the centre of the road, if we have to. And that's beautiful. That's lovely. I'm the luckiest man in the world, really, to earn me living. I'm privileged to earn me living with horses and people say, you know, you think you learnt a lot. I'll tell you, I don't know about me teaching horses. Horses have taught me a lot, definitely. They teach you, well, the things that they have, like the horses really have got patience. They're, they're laid back most of the time. They, they, you know, in their own way, they are very... Steady, baby. Steady, darling. Steady, my baby. Steady. That's it. Yeah, they've taught me, a, you know, as much as I've taught them, they've taught me. And over the years, I've, since I started breaking horses, well, as a kid, you know, I was only a kid, like under, under, only about, um, steady, babe, steady, my darling, steady. I suppose the first ones I started messing around with, I'd only be eight year old. And uh, I had one, you know, in harness at that age, just playing around with it. Of course, back then days, it was different, wasn't it? There was a lot of people around that knew the job. Um, that's it, my sweethearts, that's it. Come around there now, darling. Come around, baby, that's it, come around. Come round, that's lovely. Come round there. No, just walk, my sweetheart. Just walk. That's it. Come up, come on. Probably got to squeeze through here a little bit, but that's all right, he'll go through there. And this is a lovely one. That's it, go on, my baby. That's all right. All right, darling. All right, baby. All right, my baby, that's it. Well, oh, my sweetheart. That's it. That's it. Okay, boys, let's have a trot then. The other thing I want to be able to do, they're all cantering now. Lovely, and I want to be out to stop them just by asking them, you know. Oh, oh, stand, babies. And I want to just be out to put them there and stand on a slack rein. See, that's lovely. You feel like you've achieved so much, so they've gone off in it. Whoa, baby, stand still, stand still, my darlings. And then what I'm going to do now is just ask them, come back, my babies. Come back, darlings. Come back. Come back. Come back. Come back. Steady boat. No, no, no. Don't do that, darlings. Don't do that. Come back. Steady boat. Steady. Come back. Come back. Come back. Come back. Ah, that's all right. Yes, my sweethearts. That's all right. That's good. Walk. Walk. Good boys. And that's just nice to see they'll all stop. And they're all, you know, like this, this pony on here, he's been in a different, in a metal bit, I believe. So that's nice that they'll all stop together on the old soft rubber. Can't beat it, I don't think, for me. I don't say that everybody else should 
you know, do what I do, but I just, you know, it proves the point, doesn't it, if their horse is going. Because the man's not been strong enough who can stop one, that's a fact. Even in a Liverpool, you wouldn't stop them if they had barbed wire in their mouth. If they want to run, you won't stop them. And what you've got to do is keep calm behind them. That's the secret, if there is one. You know, if you're screaming, whoa, 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 pulling on the reins and shouting and screaming at them, they're going to run even more. Oh, that's it. See our little bay pony, what I told you, he'd have his head straight in a little wall. And he's coming off the pole even more, and he, can you see, as we're going along? But that, I'm not bothered about that, so that's not the purpose of the exercise, but just to get them all up the road. Going along, although they've all got different sized legs, all working together. And it's to my advantage to train them for their benefit. And, you know, like, my, my advantage is knowing I can do this and, and what it will, you know, what we'll achieve, you know, the four of us together will be lovely by the end of when we get back home, you know, be sweet. I like all, all the horses, I'll, you know, I'll love them all, you know, whether they're, you know, the best looking in this or an ugly one or, you know, one with a great big head or you know, whatever, Tom, Shetland, Shire horses and everything in between. I love them all. On one sure thing, you know, these dear little things, any of them, horses as well, if they know what you want and you love them, but with respect, but have your discipline, obviously, like we've all got to have discipline. Do you know, they'd, they'd give you everything they got and don't really ask for anything in return, you know. So they... I always think, like, going along like this, I'm the, well, the King of England in my eyes, I really am. You know, it's a privilege, isn't it? All their old ears flopping down the side of their heads, look. You know, just see that. There's no one up tight or too stiff. This little pony here is the, the bay pony is the most unfit one. And you can see his ears are warmed up a little bit. So we'll just carry on walking. Sunny day as well. And it's about you know, midday sort of time, so we don't want to make them all hot and sticky. And when we get back, they'll all have the old, you know, pressure washer on them. And a nice wash off and a clean, a good scrape. And then they're in and they're going to have a bit of they're sort of um, they're three meals a day. Um, I think these are on a lunchtime feed. Well, call it what time they start work, they're on a lunchtime feed. So they'll have a mid afternoon one, they will get in, settle down with a bit of ailage, you know, have a little rest for half an hour to an hour, and then feed them then about two o'clock, I suppose, up off two, something like that. It's going along so sweet. You see me bay pony, what I told you, he'd straighten up on his own, so I've adjusted nothing. I know my reins are in the right place for what I need to do. And he's straightened right up, he's coming off the pole, you know, and that's all we want. You can do too much adjustment, is what I'm saying, you know, you can keep adjusting and adjusting and adjusting this, and you can get to the point where you don't give them long enough to allow them to adjust themselves. They keep altering it. It's like when you've got a, a, a bit, you know, with cheek pieces on it. People that keep dropping it on the slot, dropping it on the slot, well, there's only so many slots on there that you can go and then you're in trouble because you've got nowhere else to go. So I like them to walk along on a slack rein and if they're doing that, they're doing that because they're happy to do it. They are not pulling. They are not trying to run away. They're not trying to do anything but just have a stroll down a country lane with their old trainer and they're happy and their ears are lovely, that's what I like to see. Their tails are off their quarters, carried away from their quarters, they're not tucked down and held with their tail between their legs, you know, pulled between their rocks. The air on their tails is lovely.